do carnivores really need supplements? Do vegans have to live on pills? You've heard the bragging. I eat nose to tell. I don't need supplements or the hope. My plant-based diet gives me everything I need. Nature knows best. Well, here's the truth. No matter what you eat, if you're missing something essential, your body will tell you. You just have to know what to look for. Today, we're exposing the truth about supplements, who actually needs them, why some diets require more support than others, and how to know if you're wasting money or saving your health. And stay with me until the end, because I'll break down the difference between symptom-based clues, lab testing, and lifestyle-based supplement needs. This part could save you hundreds and possibly even your energy, mood, and long-term health. In the low-carbon carnivore communities, we often say, real food is enough. And truthfully, real food should meet most of our needs. But here's what I tell my patients. Even ancestral eaters need modern awareness because our soil is depleted, our stress is higher, and our lifestyle is anything but ancestral. So while we don't need a drawer full of pills, some strategic supplementation might just be smart insurance. Let's start with the carnivores and low carb warriors. Here's a full expanded list to consider. Number one, electrolytes, sodium, potassium, magnesium. When you lower insulin by cutting carbs, you release sodium through the kidneys. Less sodium means you also lose water. And where the water goes, potassium and magnesium follows. Symptoms you may experience include dizziness, leg cramps, fatigue, constipation. The solution, salt your food. Consider magnesium glycinate or citrate, potassium citrate or food sources like avocado if tolerated. Number two, omega-3s, EPA and DHA. Yes, grad-fed beef has some, but if you don't eat oily fish like sardines or salmon, you may miss out. Here's the fix. Eat high quality fish oils or cod liver oil. Bonus, cod liver oil also has vitamin A and D. Number three, magnesium. Magnesium is lost in sweat, urine, and stress. And stress depletes it faster than a toddler drains a juice box. Forms to use. Glycinate for sleep. Citrate for constipation. Threonate for brain health. Number four, potassium. Often overlooked, but critical for nerve signals, muscle contraction, and pH balance. The food forms include avocados if tolerated. If not, supplements may be necessary, but make sure you use medical supervision due to the heart implications. Number five, vitamin C. To be honest, this is pretty low risk, especially with fresh meat and organ meats. But if you're a strict meat eater only, keep your eyes out. Look for symptoms like gum bleeding, fatigue, or slow healing. The fix, beef liver helps. If supplementing, choose whole food based vitamin C, not ascorbic acid. Number six, vitamin K2. It's found in liver, egg yolks, and cheese, but missing if you don't eat organs or dairy. Purpose, it directs calcium into bones, not your arteries or your joints because it can cause problems there. Supplement tip, use MK4 or MK7 forms. Number seven, iodine and selenium. If you're not eating seafood or dairy, your thyroid might pay the price. Here's the food fix, shrimp, eggs, sea salt with iodine. The supplement fix. Consider kelp or selenium from Brazil nuts, just one to two per day. Number eight, your zinc copper balance. High zinc intake from red meat can suppress copper, especially without organ meats. Here's a tip. Beef liver helps balance both. If supplementing, choose a 10 to one zinc to copper ratio. Number nine, calcium. Yes, bone broth helps, but if dairy is excluded, calcium may fall short. Two clues would be weak nails or muscle twitching. The fix, bone in sardines, bone broth, or food-based calcium supplements if needed. Now let's switch to our plant-based friends. Your plate is colorful and vibrant, but is it complete? Number one, vitamin B12, also called cobalamin. No debate here, plants don't make it. Symptoms to look out for, brain fog, numbness, fatigue. 
Here's the fix, methylcobalamin or adenosylcobalamin supplements. Number two, iron, heme versus non-heme. Non-heme iron in plants is less absorbable and easily blocked by phytates and oxalates. Symptoms include fatigue or a low hemoglobin. The fix, vitamin C with meals enhance absorption. Some may still need an iron supplement. Number three, omega-3s, EPA, DHA. Plant-based ALA must convert to EPA, DHA, but that process is extremely inefficient. So what's the fix? Algae oil supplements. Number four, zinc. Phytates block it. You may be eating enough, but absorbing little. The fix? Soap, sprout, legumes, or consider a chelated zinc supplement. Number five, calcium. Yes, leafy greens have it, but they also have oxalates which bind it up. The fix? Use low oxalate greens like bok choy, calcium set tofu, or supplement if needed. Number six, iodine. No dairy, no fish, no eggs. You might miss this thyroid supporting mineral. The fix? Seaweed, but watch for heavy metals, or iodine drops from kelp. Number seven, Selenium. Like iodine, it's key for thyroid health. The fix, one or two Brazil nuts a day or a low dose supplement. Number eight, vitamin D. So if you're not getting much sun or eating fatty fish, you might need help. Tip, vegan D3 exists now from Lichen. Consider testing your levels. Number nine, vitamin K2, absent from most plants. Without it, calcium may go where it shouldn't, like I mentioned earlier in your joints or in your arteries. The fix, natto, which is fermented soy, or MK7 supplement. Number 10, taurine, creatine, and carnitine. Not essential, your body makes them, but optimal brain and muscle performance may require more than you may. The fix. These are often supplemented by plant-based athletes and thinkers. Your grandparents got magnesium from spinach. Today, you need 10 bowls of spinach to get the same. Not to mention, you only absorb about 2% of the iron in spinach in most cases. Our soil is depleted. Crops are bred by yield, not nutrients. Animals are often fed grain, not grass. This means even a great diet might fall short. Real food is still the foundation, but supplements are a little bit of a safety net when life isn't ideal. So how do you decide? You've got three options. Option number one, symptoms-based clues. Cramps, eye twitches, constipation, think magnesium, hair loss, Brittle nails, maybe zinc or iron. Cold hands, fatigue or depression could be low B12 or thyroid nutrients. Your body whispers before it screams. Symptoms are your first sign. Option number two, lab testing. B12 levels, serum or MMA, which is methyl malonic acid for accuracy. Ferritin or iron panels to check iron stores. Magnesium, RBC magnesium, not serum. Zinc to copper ratio, critical for immune and hormone balance. Omega-3 index, the best test to measure EPA and DHA status. Homocysteine, a high level means there's a possible B vitamin issue, especially folate, B6, and B12. Vitamin D, 25 hydroxy D is the test you should ask for. Testing gives you real answers, not guesses. Here's option number three, lifestyle-based awareness. Do you sweat a lot? Work out often. In those cases, you're likely losing magnesium and sodium. Do you avoid seafood? Then omega-3s, iodine, and selenium could be missing. Do you eat repetitive meals? You may lack nutrient diversity, even without symptoms or labs, your lifestyle might tell the story. Keep in mind that most cheap supplements are synthetic, low quality, and poorly absorbed. Example, magnesium oxide, only about 4% absorbed. B12 as cyanocobalamin is cheap and not well used by everyone. Look for methylated B vitamins, methylfolate, methylcobalamin, chelated minerals like magnesium glycinate, third-party testing, minimum fillers, additives, and please don't buy your health from the gas station shelf. So should you take supplements? Only when you need to. Only when your body, your labs, or your lifestyle suggests a gap. If you're carnivore, you might need magnesium, omega-3s, or iodine. If you're vegan, you might need B12, iron, or DHA. But everyone needs awareness because knowing what to look for is the real supplement. And if you learned something today, hit that like button and subscribe. Drop a comment below. What's your diet and what supplement, if any, do you take?
And if you want to continue diving into the world of metabolic health, check out the video on the screen. I'll see you in the next video.